I think for myself, I would find it extremely hard to adapt back to society after what happened, especially considering that uh, so many of the German population didn't do very much, perhaps because they didn't know or because the state was the way it was. But how did you, how, how did you adapt afterwards back to society and how did you find the strength to trust people and continue your life after everything? Well, first of all, as I said, we completely stopped talking about the Holocaust when we come out. We stopped talking just, it is indescribable that we didn't talk among us. It was such a horrific event that we just wanted to shut it up from our mind. And for 55 years, not even with my brother or cousin, we just did not talk about. My wife uh, passed away 12 years ago. She had a cancer, unfortunately. She did not know my story. I never told her. She knew I was a Holocaust survivor, but I never told her what I went through. So perhaps in a way, I was not unique, of course. There were thousands and thousands of people that had the same experience. In a way, perhaps, the nature protected us, because if you would have thought about it all the time, you would go mad. And there are people still today in the, uh, locked up because they still didn't recuperate. I gave a lecture on, um, uh, on, on that type of a thing. And, um, uh, Trauma, I couldn't hear. I gave lecture about trauma of Holocaust survivor, and I had to sort of prepare the lecture. So I know about these things that there are still today people uh, uh, put away and looked after, that in the evening after supper they put food underneath a cushion because they think they will have no food next day, or they are afraid to go to a shower because they think gas will come out. So. Uh, uh, this, this, this is uh, the way people come out of these places. But uh, I decided to speak about it and for the uh, reason that I mentioned before. And I put it behind me. And uh, I have sort of a couple of proverbs here that I sort of write and it's something that I sort of go by. And there is one make peace with the past so it doesn't spoil your present. I make peace with my past. And you know, I get this question, do you hate German or things like this? No, I haven't got any of this. In fact, in 1957, I went to Germany, uh, which was only 12 years after I was incarcerated there. And I went to study, I was studying Dortmund engineering. And I went there because I wanted to be a good engineer, and uh, uh, I thought Germany is the place uh, where they will teach me the right way. And I must say, I was discriminated at the time, but in the positive way, not negative, because at the time and the Germans had terrible uh, complex and uh, they couldn't do enough for me. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I still know people uh, in Germany and uh, I have some friends there still. I don't uh, carry any hatred and I just want to mention, I don't know if you saw the film Close to Evil. Anybody saw it? No. Well, this film, that's a film that I made. It was shown uh, last year and the film is about, uh, I discovered a woman. She, lived in, she lives in Hamburg. She's 93 years old now. She was a SS guard in Bergen-Belsen. And not only I talking about it, but I wanted to show that my reconciliation is not only speaking, it's action as well. And I wanted to meet her, shake her hand. This woman, uh, by the way, it was accused in this trial that was uh, carried out in Lunenburg, and she was accused of killing two people. And I 
had all the research about this woman and everything. Unfortunately, in the end, I did not meet her. But the film, it's called Close to Evil. It probably will be shown sometime this year. And if you have opportunity, you should see it. Uh, but what is interesting about it is my intention were good because I wanted to show that this woman, after 70 years, it's a different person and she knows she did wrong. She was in prison. She was one year in prison. She saved the time. But unfortunately, this film was shown in Germany about a month ago. It was shown in Lunenburg. And uh, this woman, she gave testimony uh, to Belgian Bells and Archive. And her testimony is all lies. What she's saying and everything, she's twisting the uh, history. And this man, the German resident, he was so enraged what this woman is talking about that she, he filed a complaint with the prosecutor of Lunenburg. And today, she might stand a trial, and she's 93 years old, for denial, which is, a, uh, which is a punishable thing in Germany. And also, we discovered that she participated in a death march. And if we have a proof that in this death march, many inmate died, she is an accessory uh, to the crime. So that story, I don't know if you didn't hear it, it's all over the world. And uh, I'm being interviewed every second day by uh, journalists from all over the world because of this impending, maybe trial, I don't know. But this was my intention. But it was a German person that filed the thing, a, a, a complaint. They opened a prosecution file against her.